Hi, this is Chandra Prasad, the author of Damselfly, and I'm back to answer more of your questions. So let's get started. The first one is, what made you decide to have a character who would have a mental health condition that would have to go untreated because they were on the island? Well, um, I decided to make the character of Anne-Marie because I thought she was an important character to add. Um, plenty of people have mental health conditions, huge number of people actually, um, and it's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, if you have a problem with anxiety or depression, the best thing to do is to get help. Um, and Anne-Marie is quite special. We know that she has profound artistic ability, um, and she has that, she has a gift really. Um, and we know that she takes medication to alleviate whatever symptoms she has to make her feel more normal, to make her feel more functional day to day. So she does not have the medication she needs to feel more functional day to day. And as a result, um, she goes into a decline. And this is a classic case of kind of the right thing to do versus the wrong thing to do. Um, knowing that she's vulnerable and maybe needs a little extra help, characters like Mel and Sam, are, are especially Sam, is very concerned about her, whereas characters like Ritika and her little posse of girls um, really bully her and actually probably drive her to the point of um, being away from the group and needing to be separate. So one thing about Anne-Marie is that, uh, for, well, for one thing, she's one of my favorite characters, but for another, um, the fact that she's so vulnerable um, and the fact that she's picked on makes her very similar to Piggy in, the in Lord of the Flies. So if you guys get a chance to read Lord of the Flies um, and you get to know that character, you'll see some overlap between the two. Okay, the next question is, why did the book end when they are leaving the island and not being back home? Well, I will tell you guys a secret. When I wrote this book, I was really happy with this ambiguous ending. I thought it would be really kind of neat for the reader to individually imagine what would happen to each of the characters. Um, the ones that stayed behind and then the ones that stayed on the boat. But <laughs> when I get questions from readers like you, uh, the number one thing I hear about is the ending. And um, I hear a lot of different feedback about it. A lot of it is, I don't like it. I wish you had you know, changed it and made it very specific and um, let us know exactly what was happening. We see that Mel and the main character, Sam, have taken off on their own and they've used uh, Mel's ingenuity um, and their courage and their desire to help the rest of the group. They've taken off and they may or not be safe. You know, we really don't know. Um, those that stay on the island, you know, how will they be? I also honestly don't know. It's kind of up to you to decide what's going to become of, of these characters. Um, as for a sequel, I really do hope I get to write one. Um, I have some, you know, ideas brewing, although I'm not convinced, you know, one way or another at this point. But I hope I do get the chance to write a sequel. I think that would be really great. Um, another question is, I liked your descriptions of the animals and plants on the island. They are such an important part of the story. How did you decide what types of nature to include in the book? Did you research islands in that area? The answer is yes, I, um, I did do a lot of research. One of my previous books is based on Amelia Earhart, who uh, many of you probably have heard about before. She's a famous aviatrix, and um, she tried to circumnavigate the, the world. And on her second to last leg of the journey, she disappeared. We just don't know what happened to her. Uh, there's a very good chance she crashed and sank because 99% of the area she was flying over was ocean. Um, she may have been able to land on an island or atoll. We just don't know. But since I did write that book and had already done quite a bit of research on that particular area of the world, and the topography of it, and the flora and fauna, um, I was able to use that in this book as well. And I just really like doing research, so it was actually a pleasure for me to learn about different animals and plants of that region. That's one of the things I like most about being an author, is getting to learn new things and really 
uh, diving into to research. So I did do a lot of research and it is very important um, if you're writing to be, to be accurate, as accurate as possible because it just makes your story come to life. If you're kind of guessing or, um, you know, doing the minimum necessary in terms of research, it will show in your story. The more you do, the more accurate it is, the more the reader will feel like they're there. Um, so research is very important. Another question you guys asked, and you had a lot of really great questions, was the square foot exercise. And yes, the square foot exercise is in fact used by scientists. And that, in fact, that's how I found out about it. I read about it. Um, it is commonly used. And to get a sense of what it was like, I myself went into my own yard uh, and did a square foot test. And even though I live in a part of the world that is not as uh, diverse in terms of plants and animals as the part that the, these kids are in, it was nevertheless uh, really informative to see how many creatures were in my little 12-inch uh, by 12-inch space. So if you guys have any curiosity about that, I encourage you to do that where you live because I have a, I have a hunch that you'll see some really interesting things too. So this is a great question, and I think that um, a lot of the feelings about race that are prevalent on the island happened when all the kids were at Drake Rosemont as well. They certainly had preconceived notions about one another, like we all do, and um, Often these preconceived notions are very dangerous and wrong because at the end of the day, human beings are 99.9% .9 alike genetically and very little divides us. In fact, a whole lot more unites us. But Ritika being antagonistic and um, looking to sway Sam uses this idea of the golds and the pales as a way to get Sam to her side. Uh, as a way of making her feel like, this is my game, and you should be on it, and those are the others. Um, and, you know, it's a dangerous thing when that happens. Uh, I think, you know, you should always be wary of anyone that's trying to get you on their side based on difference, um, uh, physical difference. And um, I think that this idea of the golds and the pales, you know, it, it actually saddens me. I, you know, systemic racism is a part of our society and you really all have to be aware of it and have to be cognizant of the fact that we need to treat one another equally um, and be fair to treat one another as we want to be treated ourselves. Um, and certainly, you know, Ritika is in a very privileged position. She knows that. She knows that she's beautiful and powerful on the island. Um, and she's using that to her advantage. She's trying to curry favor with Sam and, and uh, get her to think like she does. So again, just like the mental illness aspect, uh, just like mental illness is prevalent in the quote-unquote real world, so is racism is prevalent in the real world, and both of these aspects of regular life carry over onto the island. Um, I already answered about the second book. Uh, I, I'm not currently writing it. I'm not currently writing a sequel, but I do hope one comes down the pike. Um, what other books have you written? Um, I've written eight books. In fact, uh, I just finished my newest young adult novel. It's called Mercury Boys. So stay tuned for that. It's coming out in 2021, 2021. <laughs> I've written books for adults as well, and a number of them have been historical novels. I told you about the book about Amelia Earhart. Um, I wrote a book about a traveling circus troupe. I wrote a book about a girl who attends Yale University as her brother in the 1930s because at, in the 1930s, Yale did not admit girls into their undergraduate program. Um, and that was a lot of fun to write. Uh, and I also authored and contributed to an anthology called Mixed, which is about the multiracial experience 
um, as told through short stories. So if you're interested in something like that, check it out. It was my pleasure to answer your very good questions. Um, thank you for reading Damselfly. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I wish you a wonderful summer. Thanks. Bye.